This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. Let's take a look at how we can integrate some new fonts into our existing project. Head over to Google Fonts or fonts.google.com. I'm going to be utilizing IBM Plex Sans, Ple Plex Sans. Okay, so that's the preferred font for this project. You can choose whatever font you like, of course. So once you know how to add different fonts. So once you've selected your font, just a case of selecting the different font weights you want to use. Now you can just, can just select one if you like. And then you can just add the numbers to the import here uh, if you need to do that or prefer to do that. But you can go ahead and just select. You can see that the numbers are just going to be added right here. So typically I choose four, five, six, seven, and maybe 800. So some fonts won't have all the different font weights. This one has four, five, six, and seven. So what I'm going to need here is the at import. So I'm just going to copy that. Another good reason to show you this is that we're going to be building the a new CSS file here, which can be utilized throughout the whole project. I mentioned this approach before we created the theme file. So let's go ahead and create a main.css file. Here, CSS being styling that we can apply and attach to different components. So this is where I'm going to paste that import. So that's just a copy and paste from Google Fonts. And that's going to make available the font in all the different weights. And now I can specify in my theme file or continue with the main CSS file, the actual fonts I want to use within different components. Now, what I want to do here is make sure that this font is being utilized system wide. And for that, I need to change or add or override the default material UI theme. So we're going to need to override type typography and then just set the system or the application font so this is going to be font family and we need to then just specify the new font so we're giving some information here how do you actually apply that so we copy this at the bottom right hand corner here let's go back to our project add that in That's going to need double or singles. So add that in. And then we could go ahead and add some more if you like. Um, if you wanted to add some more backup fonts, say for example, if Google fonts went down, it would then utilize the next font in the row and so on. So if you wanted to do that, that's no problem. So something that you might consider doing if you don't select a font and in terms of performance, you could select system fonts. So typically, a lot of websites might utilize system fonts. So fonts that are already embedded or installed onto your computer, utilizing those. So you just need to be careful to select because Apple and Microsoft will have different fonts. So if you are going to go that approach, just type in, for example, into Google CSS system fonts and have a read around that. Like I said, that can Im sometimes improve in performance because you're not having to download or serve fonts to the user as well as the website. Right, so with that in mind, we will need to use join here so that it correctly utilizes multiple fonts if we have uh, selected or chosen multiple fonts. Right, so with that in place, um, that's now the font family. Uh, so we're going to need a, a comma there. So something else we could do is I mentioned the different variants. So if you remember, let's go back to page templates. I remember we mentioned variant, for example, H6. So if you did want to change that in a, in a global context, then all you need to do here in typography is just add that in. So after after font family here, then just go ahead and select, for example, H6, and then you can go ahead and just style that. So that's something you can do there in this typography. 
Okay, so if I didn't make that clear, the reason why we're using join here is so that we can convert this into a string. So when it's rendered in the page or rendered on the browser, this will render as a string of different family fonts, font families options that's going to be utilized by the browser. And like I said, if one font isn't available, it's going to then fall back to the next font and so on. Right, so with that change, we now should have a, an application that's utilizing that font by default. So if I right click, for example, this is in Chrome. So at this point, we can inspect to make sure that we're using the right font. So I can right click, this is in Chrome, inspect goes down and I can open up the uh, computer here, for example, and it tells me here the font family is IBM Plex Sans. Right. So the problem at the moment is that in actual fact, it's not. It's not actually utilizing that font just yet. So for example, here I've just grayed out the typography that we just added, and you can see that it's still utilizing the old font. So what we need to do is we need to activate the CSS to make it available. So this file needs to be incorporated into the main HTML page that we're rendering so that the fonts are actually available so we can actually use them in our theme. So what we're going to need to do, if we head over to, for example, the app file here, um, what we can do, well, actually, in fact, we'll do this in main. So if we go over to main, remember what's happening here, the index is calling main and the main is called an app. So that's the kind of entry point into the app. So here, what we do is we will import that in. So import and then dot slash theme um, main.css. So now we've done that, if we just refresh, we can already see that in actual fact now the, the, the font has actually changed. If I deactivate it, you can see by just the J uh, so I've just deactivated that, commented that out, and you can now see the font has changed back to the default. So it's important that we load that file in. So what's happening here is that by adding that there, if I right click and just inspect, go to the top here in the header now, we're actually loading in our CSS file, or the CSS file should be available. And you can see in this top line here, the style, and you can see where it's coming from. So it has the, the whole root, the whole path in actual fact, but you can see it's the main CSS file that's been added there. So that style has been added. So therefore it's then available when we add all the different styles on the page. And of course, this will get rendered on every single page in our projects.